In this episode, we'll talk a little bit about the new LED technology that is in this light from ProLight, the Orion 300 FS. Now, first of all, this is not going to be a full review of the Orion 300 FS. What I want to do is talk about the technology that is in this light, which is an evolution of LED lighting technology. In this case, we're using the Orion 300 FS as my key light. I'm shooting it through a 4x4 right over here. And the thing that's unique about this light is instead of using red, green, blue, and two different color of white LEDs, tungsten and daylight, Instead, this light uses red, green, blue, amber, cyan, and lime colored LEDs. No white colored LEDs in this fixture at all. And so on its chip on board, it has all these different colors, and then it shoots it through a diffusion dome, which then mixes them all. And what makes that unique? Why is that special? Each of those different color LEDs essentially control the light output for this light in a particular part of the overall visible light spectrum. So what that means in practical terms is we now have six control points along the lighting spectrum where each of the different colored LEDs can control how much light power is coming out in that part of the spectrum. And what this means in practical terms is that with this light, it can create a much more accurate representation of different types of lights. Another way to say that is that it actually produces a wider color gamut and it also produces more color volume. What this also means is that this light can more accurately reproduce particular types of light sources. So for example, what's interesting about a tungsten light or daylight from the sun is that they're both black body emitters. That is to say the sun is a black body emitter, meaning it is emitting light across the entire visible light spectrum. And it's doing it in a fairly continuous manner. It doesn't have these massive spikes like some artificial lighting sources have. Same thing with a tungsten light. And while it produces less blue light than daylight, it does produce all of the different visible spectrum and it does it in a fairly continuous, predictable manner. The trick comes with artificial lighting sources where there are all these crazy spikes at different parts in the spectrum and that can differ from fixture to fixture. So that's always harder to predict. And what that results in is based on how you set your color temperature and how the color science is programmed into your camera, those spikes may do things to certain colors that you may not want. So here's just a very basic illustration of this. I shot this interview shot here, and in one case I used the Orion 300 FS, and in another case I used the Aperture 300X, which is a bicolor LED light. I set both of them to 3200 Kelvin. I changed nothing about either of these scenes. I actually used a light meter to set the exposure or the output on the dimmer, and this is what those two shots look like. Now you might think to yourself, well, they're not all that different. And that's true. Both of them are totally usable. In post, I didn't do any sort of correction except to apply the exact same LUT to both of them to correct for the log that we shot on our Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. So what's interesting is that when I look at these two after we've applied the same exact LUT, is that the one from the Orion looks closer to my eye to what we actually saw when we set up the shot. And let me just point out a couple of things. Number one, the skin tones. The skin tones more naturally were more saturated. And secondly, the shirt is actually closer to that color than the shirt in the aperture shot. The shirt in the aperture shot looks like the color shifted a little bit. So it's not as real to life as what we saw with our eyes when we were setting that up. Now you might ask yourself, is that really that big of a deal? I mean, if I'm just shooting interview shots, is it really that important? Well, maybe, maybe not, that's up to you. But what I'm highlighting here and what has me excited is that this is a technology that will make it easier to get what you expect. And it's always better to be able to get what you expect during production than have to do any sort of color correction, especially secondary color corrections in post. Now, of course, there's an entire discussion to have here about color science and different cameras and what the different manufacturers do in terms of interpreting the light that hits the sensors. And we're gonna to have to set that aside. That's another topic for another video. But what about the color quality metrics? Things like CRI, TLCI, TM30, SSI. Well, first of all, Gerald Undone just did a great video talking about some of those different metrics using the Seiconic C800. 
I'll put a link for that up here if you want to go check that out. But here's something I'm finding that's very interesting about these color quality metrics is they're not perfect. And here's a great illustration of that. And I, I don't want to get too far off the path here, but basically what I found that was super interesting was that the Orion 300 FS didn't necessarily score worlds above, and in some cases it was even lower scores, on some of the color quality metrics. And let me show you what I mean here. For example, if you look at CRI, CRI at 3200 was 95.3, at 5500 Kelvin it was 96.7, and then on the Aperture LS300X it came in at 97.6. So they're all kind of in the same ballpark. There are no clear differences there. But what's interesting is that looking with my eyes at the shot that we set up with Danny, the Orion actually looked closer to real life. So there's something interesting going on there. All right, TLCI. This is the Television Lighting Consistency Index. This is sort of another metric that's considered kind of outdated. It really was built for broadcast cameras, three sensor broadcast cameras. We don't really, most of us don't really use those anymore. And so the overall basis for this color quality metric is a little bit iffy. So here at 3200 Kelvin on the Orion, it came in at 90, 96 when you go to 5500 Kelvin, and then 98 when you're at 3200 Kelvin on the Aperture 300X. So again, you're seeing a spread there. But the story doesn't quite line up when it comes to actually looking at the footage with your eyes. Now, what about SSI? That's probably the metric that I've relied on the most, most recently. And it looks like it has its issues too. Let me show you what I mean here. So at 3200 Kelvin, the Orion 300 FS came in at 80. That's actually the lowest score I've seen for a light set to tungsten of all the reviews I've done. Very interesting. If you go to 5500 Kelvin, the score goes to 73. That's pretty standard for a daylight colored LED light, so nothing surprising there. If you go to the Aperture 300X, it came in at 85 if you're on 3200 Kelvin. So that actually scored five points higher than the Orion. <clears throat> Interesting. And that again is when you compare it to a reference tungsten light source. So what this would suggest is that the Aperture 300X should look better, more realistic, more true to life. But that, again, is not what we're seeing. Now, if you go over to the TM30 color metric, this is basically a much more advanced, updated version of CRI. It uses, I believe, 99 color chips as opposed to the, I think it was 16 or something with the original CRI. Plus, it calculates things a little bit differently, and it also looks at saturation. What we found here is that the Orion came in at 92 at 3200 Kelvin, 95 at 5500 Kelvin, and the Aperture 300X came in at 94 at 3200 Kelvin. So <laughs> what we're seeing here is that this is saying basically that the Orion should be better, at least at 5500 Kelvin. So I think what we're really finding with these color quality metrics is that they're predictors and they're not perfect. So it almost feels like if you get up into the 90s on most of the metrics, you're going to be in really good shape. Spectral similarity index is a little bit different. If you're in the 70s for daylight or 80s for tungsten, it seems like you're going to get a good result generally, but they're not perfect. And so you can't necessarily, at least I'm finding my lesson here is that I'm not sure I'm going to rely on those numbers quite so much as I have in the past. Again, still useful predictors, still probably somewhat instructive to be able to compare different lights, but it's not going to tell the whole story. And really doing test shots is probably the most important thing you can do. Now, as I said before, this is not a full review of the ProLite Orion 300 FS. So let me just show you some of the features. Basically, what I want to say here is that this light, and again, I have a pre-production copy, so I don't want to do a review on a pre-production copy. But what I'm finding so far is that this is probably my favorite single point light I've used so far. It's not the most powerful I've ever used. Obviously, something like the Aperture 600D is going to be more powerful by a long shot. Even a regular 300D is going to be more powerful in terms of overall light output. But in terms of color accuracy, in terms of all the other features that you see here, it's probably my favorite light. Now, are there any downsides? This is an engineering copy or a pre-production copy. The fan's a little bit louder than I would like, although you do have controls where you can limit the amount of light output as a trade-off for less fan noise by basically spinning the fans down or even turning it off altogether. But you're limited to 25% on this pre-production copy. In any case, I'm hoping to get my hands on a production copy at some point and do a full review there. But what I want to kind of give you as a takeaway message from my perspective 
this seems like a really promising, really exciting new LED technology and really kind of the next evolutionary step in the improvement of LED lights for film and video production. I hope you found that helpful. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And if you've not already subscribed, make sure you do that. And it'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon. Music